In this video, I'll share all you need to know about a Pymetrics assessment. We'll first discuss which companies require candidates to take this assessment and delve deeper into how the game works. Our team has created amazing animations for each of the 12 games to give you a precise idea of what to expect in the real life assessment. As I'll guide you through each game, I'll also provide you with the best preparation tips and share some tricks to maximize your score in this assessment. We'll also show you how your target company will assess your performance at the end of the game. Let's get started. If you're new to our channel, my name is Dennis and I'm the founder of Prep Matter. Subscribe to our channel to receive regular tips for preparing for your job interviews. Also, don't forget to check out our other videos to elevate your job application. Pymetrics test is used by many industries. BCG, Bain, Accenture and PwC are some of the consulting firms that require this assessment. In addition to them, companies like JP Morgan, Unilever, Heinz, British American Tobacco and Tesla also ask for Pymetrics. Note that this assessment isn't used universally by those firms and we've seen some of them initially using it but then discontinuing it. So it's better to check with the HR department of your target office to confirm the type of assessment that they require. All right, the Pymetrics test assesses your performance across nine traits. These traits are risk tolerance, learning, decision-making, focus, effort, emotion, fairness, attention, and generosity. At the end of the game, your recruiter will receive a report just like this. It shows the traits in which you perform well and where you were expected to perform better. Your results will then be compared to those of the existing employees of your target company, generating three types of results. Highly recommended, recommended, and not recommended. HR will evaluate your candidacy based on your resume, cover letter, referrals, as well as the results of the Spymetrics test. In other words, your performance in this test will not be the sole determinant of the outcome of your application. Let's go over each of the 12 mini games. Our team has created visuals so that you can get a sense of how the real assessment will look. Here they are. Money Exchange 1. Key Presses. Balloons. Money Exchange 2. Digits. Easy or hard. Stop. Cards. Arrows. Lengths. Towers and faces. Let's get started. Money Exchange 1. This is an example of a trust game in game theory. As you begin the game, you'll be given $10 to participate in the trial. Following this, you'll be paired up with a user, essentially the computer, not a real person. In this setting, you will first decide how much of that $10 you'd like to send to your partner. Your money will be tripled once it's transferred to your partner. To illustrate, let's say you decide to send $5 to your partner. Now, your partner has $15 and you're left with $5. Following this, your partner will take their action and decide how much of that tripled amount they will give you back. Based on our experience, this is quite randomized. So, say you receive $3 back. In the end, you end up with $8 and your partner has 12. After this transaction, you'll evaluate if your partner was fair in this transaction. Let's say like five, as your partner ended with more money and could have shared more with you. As you can see, the trade assessed in this game is fairness and risk tolerance. That's why we advise taking a relatively safe approach and offering about half of your initial money. In the scenario we've just covered, if you're provided with $10, give about $5 to your partner. Following this, the money you'll receive will be randomized. We suggest that if the final amount you and your partner have is quite close, say with a $2, $3 difference, rate it as fair from 7 to 10. But if it is higher than this, you can rate it somewhere in the middle, say 5 to 7. Personally, I wrote my dissertation in game theory, and I'm fascinated by assessments that use game theory. If you'd like to learn more about the trust game, I found this interactive website created by Nikki Case to be pretty educational and entertaining at the same time. Great, let's move to the second game, key presses. This time you'll be working against a one minute timer. Your task is to press the space bar as many times as possible within this time frame. In their official instructions, they ask you to use your dominant hand and index finger. We'll get back to that later. This game is supposed to test your effort trait. Of course, the goal is to reach the maximum number of hits in one minute. So how can you achieve that? 
We advise not following the official guideline and using both of your index fingers to maximize your score. We found this game, Shumup Speed, quite useful to work out what strategy works best for you. You'll have 10 seconds to hit the space bar as much as possible. Our entire prep matter team tried this game and we all found using both of our hands more useful than this one. All right, let's move to the next game, balloons. Your task is to accumulate as much money as possible by pumping the balloons. If you pump the balloons too much, they may explode. Each pump will earn you 5 cents. And you only keep it if your balloon doesn't explode. In total, expect to deal with 39 balloons, which should take you about 3 minutes. Let's see a quick example of how it will look. Let's get started. So far, so good. None of my balloons pop so far. Here we go, got a little greeny. Okay, this one fine. Let's try a little higher. Popped it. I'll take a risk to make up for my loss earlier. Here we go. The game assesses your risk tolerance and decision-making traits. Based on our observations, while some balloons pop immediately, most pop at a point a little above 25 cents. So as a risk averse person, I'd recommend collecting most of your prizes at around 25 cent mark. But if you end up getting a little unlucky at the start and have most of your balloons popped already, then try to take more risk and claim your money at a higher level. While it is rare, we've seen some of the balloons pop only at the 100 cent mark. While there's no perfect simulation for this game, playing blackjack for fun, not for gambling, can help you identify your own risk profile. As you may know, in blackjack, you aim to beat the dealer by getting your hand value closer to 21 than the dealer's without exiting it. Starting with the two cards and deciding whether to hit for more or stand to maintain your total. So, play it a few times to gauge if you're natural risk averse or risk taker and you can strategize your moves in this balloon game accordingly. Let's move to the next game, Money Exchange 2. This game is a little different from the first one. It takes your fairness traits and is a typical example of the dictator's game in game theory. So let's break it down further. You'll again have a partner, but this time both you and your partner will receive $5 at the start of the game. Following this, you'll receive an additional $5. Note that even though the official game says either you or your partner will receive this additional $5, we've always seen the test taker, you, getting this additional money. You'll need to decide how much of that additional $5 you'd like to send to your partner. Subsequently, you rate how fair you think you were with your transfer. Unlike the first money exchange game, there's a second scenario here. In this scenario, you can still give some money up to $5 again. But this time, you can also choose to take up to $5 from your partner. After you make your selection, you'll evaluate how fair you think you were with your decision. Here are the tips. In game theory, the most optimal outcome is to keep the entire amount for yourself. But of course, that's not what the employers are looking for. So we suggest striking good balance between monetary gain and fairness. In the first scenario, give about half of what's given to you, so $2.5, and rate your transaction as fair from 7 to 10. In the second scenario, similarly, give $2.5 or any other amount that allows you and your partner to have the same amount of money. Again, rate your transaction as fair from 7 to 10. Let's move to the next game, digits. You'll be shown a sequence of numbers, one at a time, that will appear pretty fast. Once all the digits are shown, you'll need to enter them accurately. The game starts with four digits and goes up by one after every correct answer, and goes down by one after every wrong answer. We've seen candidates reach 14 digits, so you'll likely need to spend quite some time solving these questions. The game will end when you have three wrong answers in total. Let's do a quick demonstration of what the game would look like. Okay, we're starting from the top with four digits. All right, let's do one final one with five digits. Pymetrics states that your intention and focus are tested in this game, but you don't need to rely on your memory. Even though it goes against Pymetrics instructions, you should write down the digits as they appear so you can maximize your score. 
At some point you'll make some mistakes, but make sure that you reach at least 9 digits. According to some research papers, that is the upper limit of an average person's digit memory. If you'd like to practice beforehand, we highly suggest Human Benchmarks Number Memory Game. You can try to memorize or write down each digit and see which strategy works best for you. Let's discuss the next game, easy or hard. You're given two tasks to choose from, an easy or a hard task. The easy task rewards you with $1 if you press the space bar five times within three seconds. The hard task offers between $1.24 and $4.3 if you press the space bar 60 times within 12 seconds. Note that when you choose your task each time, you'll also be given the probability of winning the prize. Even if you complete a task successfully, you may not receive your prize, so your objective is to earn as much money as possible for up to 12 different tasks. Let's go over a couple examples. A few tips. You need to make your choice of an easy or a hard task very quickly. As if you don't make a decision in 5 seconds, the game will assign a task randomly. By default, you should select the hard task. In fact, it's not that hard. You need to press the space bar 60 times within 12 seconds. I tried a few times and managed to hit 130 times in 12 seconds, so the hard task should be easily attainable. Having said that, if your probability of receiving the price is low, say lower than 20%, you may want to go with the easy task as pressing the space bar can get a little tiring. At least you won't get frustrated if you don't win the price. Based on our observations, only 3 to 4 tasks out of up to 12 tasks have a low price probability. This game assesses your traits of effort, decision making and risk tolerance. Similar to the key presses game, you can find some online tools that can help you improve your speed. I'll refer to another resource besides Shumup Speed, which I recommended earlier. The Space Bar Clicker website is also quite interesting. You can set up your timer exactly to 12 seconds to check if you can easily hit 60 presses. Let's move to the seventh game, Stop. 70 to 80 red or green circles appear on the screen randomly, one at a time, and almost every second. You're asked to press the space bar when a red circle appears, and do nothing when a green circle appears. This game assesses your traits of attention and focus. Some tips. You don't need to press the space bar exactly when you see a red circle. You'll have about a second before seeing the next circle, so you'll have a bit more time than you think. Let's see a set of 10 examples and feel free to practice it with me now. Let's begin. All right, I hope this makes sense. I found the perfect game to practice. It's called Brain Spark, Fast Reaction. You'll need to match the color, which is red or green, that appears in the circle every second, just like in the Pymetrics game. Let's discuss the eighth game, cards. You'll start with $2,000 and you'll draw a card from any of the four decks. You can select which deck to draw the card each round from, and there will be eight rounds in total. Some cards you will pick will earn you a reward somewhere between $25 and $100. Some may not yield no returns, and some will make you lose between $25 and $1,150. Your task is to accumulate as much money as possible over the course of 8 rounds. Let's take a sneak peek. I'll draw 10 cards to give an idea of the game. Alright, $50. Great, I doubled it. Now, no returns, $25, great, okay, now I lost some, $50, doubled it again, another negative return, 100 and 100, great. This game measures your risk tolerance and decision making traits. As you begin the assessment, you should be able to notice that each deck has different characteristics. Some decks will yield positive, but small returns, while others may offer big rewards, but also big losses. This game is a typical representation of a slot machine, or multi-armed bandit problem. You need to decide which decks to draw the cards from, how many times to draw per deck, and in which order to play them. So, 
Should you follow an exploit or explore strategy? The explore strategy doesn't worry about the what ifs. You keep drawing cards from a deck where you think you can get the best outcome. The explore strategy though is more cautious. You know there could be a better choice, so you keep drawing from different decks. In this game, we propose a hybrid strategy. Start with a deck and explore different decks for the first few turns. You might be able to recognize a pattern. You may want to continue with the same deck you're happy with for about 3 rounds or so. Then keep exploring. If you end up getting a negative return from a deck, try not to draw anything from it for the next 5 rounds or so. Let's move on to the ninth game, Arrows. You'll be shown a series of arrows. If arrows are blue or black, you should press the key or the keyboard in the direction the center arrow points. If arrows are rather red, you press the key on your keyboard in the direction the side arrows point. You'll go through a total of 135 rounds. You'll have a little over a second per round. Let's go through a set of 10 arrows to show you how this game will look like. In the meantime, feel free to do it yourself and I'll show you the correct answers at the end. Almost done. Fantastic. I hope you got all your answers correct. The game tests both of your learning skills and attention skills. And to perform well, you need to take your time to understand the instructions clearly. Just like in any other game, the instructions section isn't timed, so you'll have plenty of time at the start. I'll suggest two games you can play online so that you can improve your agility. The first is fairly straightforward, it's called Arrow Hero. You just need to press the key on the keyboard matching the direction of the arrows. It gets quite challenging after 10 seconds or so. The second game is called Two Sides. This one is a bit more challenging because you need to understand the instructions clearly, just like the real Pymetrix game. But I'd say this is even harder. Give it a go. I personally struggled a little bit at the start, but hopefully you'll do a better job. The tenth game, Lens. You'll see a set of nine faces, one at a time. You'll need to press the left arrow on your keyboard if the face has a small mouth, or the right arrow if the mouth has a big mouth. The goal is to maximize your earnings. You'll earn random amounts of money every correct answer, which can be zero cents, which is nothing, 10 cents, or 50 cents. Let's do a quick run of 10 faces and feel free to play along. You can check your answers at the end. Let's get started. Almost there. The last one. Great. If you haven't got all your answers correct, you'll get them right after I share this tip with you. Just place the cursor on the edge of the face's mouth and compare the mouth length of the following faces accordingly. Now, going back to the same time faces again, this time, let's place our cursor and I'll reveal the answers as we move along. As you see, the first one is small, big, small, big, small, again small, now it's big, again it's big, small and big. While this game assesses your attention and focus traits, this workaround can help you achieve a very good score. Let's go to the next game, Towers. This game is inspired by the Towers of Hanoi. You're given three rods and a number of discs with different colors. The goal is to match the target towers in as few moves as possible within the given time frame. Each move consists of taking the upper disc from one of the roads and placing it on top of another road or an empty road. The good news is that you can undo a move or start over. Based on speaking with many candidates who have taken the test recently, we always saw the same scenario. So let's go over what you should expect in the game and our suggested solution in only 10 steps. Let's move to the green to the middle. Now pink, then red on top of it. Now to match the target towers, let's move the yellow to the left. To put the pink on top of the yellow, we first need to move away the red. And now we can move the pink to the left. Now, let's move the red away and put the blue on top of the pink. And we can finish the target tower by moving the red. And finally, green on top. Fantastic. Let us know in the comments if you find a shorter solution, we would love to hear. 
Just in case you get a different scenario, but also to practice your skills in general, I highly suggest trying a few scenarios of the Towers of Hanoi game. There are many versions available online, and we quite liked Hanoi Tower Touch on the Apple Store or Hanoi Tower on Google Play. The game can get quite addictive, but as you practice more, you realize that the version as in the Pymetrics test is quite basic. While this game is testing your decision-making traits, preparing ahead of the game will give you a head start. Our last game is Faces. You're shown photographs of people and asked to pick the word that best expresses the emotion of each person within 7 seconds. Also, sometimes photographs are shown with a short test describing the context. In this case, you're given 30 seconds to provide an answer. Your objective is to identify people's emotions as accurately as possible across a total of 14 questions. Needless to say, emotion is the trait measured in this game. Let's go over some sample questions. While I'm looking at the game and solving for myself, in the meantime, feel free to pause it and you can also practice it yourself. Let's get started. All right. The first one is the short one. That's fairly straightforward. The second one is the long question. So let's go over it together. This is a story of a young artist waiting for the results of a major art competition. She's worked on her submission for months and is now sitting in the audience, waiting for her name to be called. Her heart races as the announcer starts listing the winners. All right, this must be hope. Great. Next is another short one. This is fairly straightforward. Another short one. All right, we have another long question here. This is a story of a person trying a new restaurant. Expecting a delicious meal, they're served a dish that looks and smells unappetizing. The person tentatively takes a bite, but is immediately repulsed by the taste. Has to be discussed. Here's how we can improve your performance. We found Greater Good Magazine's Emotional Intelligence Test. You can take the test for yourself, and after each response, you'll also see a detailed explanation of each answer. I must say that I learned a thing or two as I was going through this test. So far, we've covered 12 core games. While it's quite rare, a few test takers also reported that they've seen four additional numerical and logical reasoning games. Let's briefly go over them as well. First, we have the Magnitudes game. You'll be shown two subsets of this game, dots and fractions. In the dots game, you'll see two boxes, and you'll pick which has the largest proportion of yellow dots. You'll see multiple sets of these visuals. In the fractions game, you'll see two fractions, and your task is to pick the largest fraction. Both games assess your response time. Since you'll only have five seconds per question, you won't have time to use your calculator, so you need to use your best judgment. We advise utilizing Prep Matters Math tool to improve your basic algebra. The next game is sequences. You'll see 20 different sequences where you need to complete the numerical pattern. You'll have 30 seconds per sequence, so you'll have enough time to think through your answer. You can find many free resources out there to practice. We found this test from India BIX quite handy. Feel free to take a look. All right, the third game is Shapes. This game assesses your spatial reasoning ability. You'll be given a complex, big pattern on the left. And on the right, you'll be provided with some options where you need to select the shape that's hidden in the pattern. Since it's less straightforward than the previous games, you'll be given more time, 45 seconds per question. And in total, expect to solve 14 different questions. You can Google hidden figures or figure disembedding to find some samples. The one we found on AppSpot was quite helpful. The last game is letters. You'll see letters appearing one by one. Your task is to respond when you see the same letter that appeared two letters before. And in total, you'll see 40 letters and identify 10 letters that are shown to you two letters before. You can practice over side tool kits and back or two back task game. It first shows you the previous letters, but after you complete the easy version, it stops showing it. It's a great tool to practice for this assessment. Hope this tutorial was helpful. If you'd like to learn more about insights into job application assessments, please subscribe to our channel.